You can use charcoal for so many different things inside of your garden, but not only outside, you can also use it indoors for your house plants. So in this video, we're gonna be making charcoal. I'm gonna be showing you how we can use it indoor for your house plants, but also we're gonna be making biochar so we can use that for our outdoor garden. Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, house plants, and humor as a much needed form of mental health therapy. And I got charcoal. I made this charcoal myself, which is super awesome. If you've been watching or checking out my live streams, you've been noted, well, I've been trying to make some charcoal happen and I finally got some. You may want to skip around in this video if you're here for your outdoor garden, we're going to be hitting that up. But if you're here for your, the house plant application, then stick around or just float around in the video and find that little section. I'm not going to get into too much detail about the exact science about this. I will refer to those videos down in the description below. There's some great information if you want to get all nerdy about it. I love that information, but I don't want to bore you necessarily so much. So I will drop that links down below. It's awesome, complete information. I got a little 30 gallon aluminum can that's going to go fit in right in there. But the problem is it's got a little bit of a hole. Yeah, I know it's got a hole, but it actually still worked out pretty good. So I can't complain. You're going to need to drill a lot of holes. I mean, some really large ones because you really want that oxygen to come inside of that drum to feed the fire. In the beginning, Jose was using a small drill tip. You need some big holes. Trust me, you're gonna know. I forgot to mention for the 55 gallon drum, you're gonna have to cut off the lid, but keep the lid because we're gonna be using that later. Take the smaller steel drum, then put it inside of the larger steel drum because we're gonna be making the charcoal inside of the smaller barrel. It is ideal to use wood logs like you see here, but hey, if you have any other type of wood, as long as it's not pressure treated, no pressure treated whatsoever. But if it's wood, throw it in there. After you've put the lid on the smaller garbage can, now it's time to start adding a bunch of wood around the garbage can. We're going to be lighting a fire in the steel drum, but around the smaller drum. So we're really gonna be heating up the smaller drum inside of it, and that is where the charcoal is gonna be making and doing its magic. After you've packed the barrel with wood, now it's time to light that fire. Remember that lid, it needs a hole for all of the smoke to escape. I've seen other channels make chimneys, but I'm not gonna do that. Well, this is a rare peanut dog sighting. She loves the heat. Way too close if you ask me. Jose found out the hard way, you need a lot larger holes in order for the fire to continue. If the smaller drum inside of the larger one is a little bigger than you would want, then you may have to just keep packing the larger drum with a lot of wood to maintain the amount of heat that you're gonna need to make the charcoal. I had to learn this the hard way, so we had to just keep feeding it wood. It's okay, because after four hours of constantly letting that fire go, you're gonna get some charcoal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, that's awesome, yo. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Now, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, feel free to let, you know, write it down in the comments below because if I don't know, I love to learn. And maybe there'd be someone else who has like a lot of information and there's a lot of people that read the comments. So help a gal out, you know what I mean? And with working with, you know, not the best stuff, because this is kind of big for that, but it no, still it worked out. Right. This worked out pretty good. Right. You don't have to make your own charcoal in order for you to make biochar. I would suggest finding organic charcoal in order to make this all happen. That is why I chose to make my own charcoal because I know that it's going to be organic. I know where the, you know, where the wood came from, where I sourced it, and that's what I'm going to be using. All this leftover that is burned inside of the steel drum, assuming that it is not pressure treated and there's no chemicals inside of that wood when it was originally burned, this wood ash that's left over, you can totally put that in your garden as well. Remove any nails, anything like that, but that is a great source of potassium, calcium, and magnesium and can definitely go in the garden. Another fun fact about wood ash is that that increases your soil pH. So if your soil is a little imbalanced, and is a little acidic, throw some wood ash inside of your soil and then you're good to go with that. Next step after making your charcoal is inoculating that charcoal with microorganisms and that is what makes the biochar. You cannot, I would advise, do not put direct charcoal into your soil. 
into your containers, nothing. Because charcoal is very, very porous. It acts like a sponge after the charcoal is made. So this is why we're gonna be inoculating it, adding something to it, so it, you know all those little porous spaces can be kind of like used up. Because if you don't, then all the nutrients that are inside of that soil will directly get absorbed up by the charcoal and then depleting your soil. That is why we need to inoculate it, add some nutrients, add to the microbes, so it can already get absorbed and sucked up like a sponge, so then you can put it into your garden already ready to rock and roll. In order to inoculate your charcoal, you're going to need microbes, some sort of microbial activity, bacteria and so on and so forth, and we can find that through fertilizers. Organic, of course, you can use fish emulsion, you can use what I'm gonna be using, like a leftover organic granular fertilizer. And also another thing that I'm gonna be using is compost. Once you have already done compost, it is filled rich with microbes and bacterial stuff. So I'm gonna be using two part compost, one part organic fertilizer, and then mixing it all together into a bunch of water. The question is for me is how much water am I going to be needing in order to make this inoculation happen? I guess this is the trial and error part that I'm talking about. Uh, are you guys basking in the sun? Of course you are, my little cutie patooties. All right, here we go for the fertilizer. Okay, there we go. That looks like a sloshy mess. I did not add the charcoal yet. So this, imagine how many microbes and stuff is inside of this. This shit stinks real bad now. But imagine once I put in the charcoal, will it smell like this because it'll get absorbed into the charcoal, thus making it biochar? Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think? This one has a mixture combination of both. This one has granular fertilizer as well as compost. This one strictly compost, that's all there is in there. And then this one is the organic fertilizer, well the granular fertilizer. I did a video on this using turning this into a compost tea. It's the same application. Um, I'm gonna try that. And this one is gonna be just pure fish emulsion. I have this one right here. This is the last experiment with fish emulsion. So this is gonna be kind of gross. Oh man, that looks like it stinks. I'm gonna let that just chill in there. That's gross. There we go. Now we're gonna add the part water and then we're just gonna stir this up and let it chill for at least a week. It's only been one day and I've covered them because it's raining currently right now. But so far, I mean, it. you know what? It doesn't smell at all. Can you believe that? All that yucky organic fertilizer that I threw in there. The compost didn't smell, but this one looks fantastic. I'm just gonna be stirring it. They really want a lot of air circulation in there. You don't want it to get all nasty. So you really want to encourage a lot of movements. Keep stirring, keep stirring. The only one that does smell is this fish emulsion. It doesn't smell as much as it did when I first poured in the liquid, but at the same time, I do still smell it. So I'm thinking to myself, self, I think I'm gonna need to add more charcoal to this. You notice that it has a little more liquid than the other ones, missing more charcoal. A lot of them are larger chunks, so you may wanna break that down, you know, like manually, however you wanna make that happen. That's up to you what you wanna do with it. But I also, in other videos, once you're done processing it, and then you put it in the garden, it could take up to like six months for this to get fully like, you know, incorporated into the soil. So that is why it's actually good, well, this is why I'm doing it, in the fall time. So it can have all the six months it wants through the winter time to do its thing and hopefully be ready for the springtime. What's going on my plant peoples and welcome to the section about house plants and charcoal. If you've ever seen those nursery pots or cute little containers like this that have no drainage holes on the bottom and you're like, what the heck? How in the world am I gonna handle all that water that's coming out of the soil and it's got nowhere to go? This is where the charcoal comes into play. Now uh, typically you can buy your own horticulture charcoal at the store, but let's just say that you're making your own because you have an outdoor garden and you have some leftover charcoal the same concept, same thing at all. This is the same charcoal that I made outside with Jose and I brought some of it indoors because I'm gonna be storing it and using this for my indoor house plants. If you have a bag like this, no problem at all. But if you just so happen to be, to be making some charcoal for your outdoor garden, you might as well steal some of that and bring it indoors. 
I'm gonna be potting up this little pothos cutting into a glass one. This one has no drainage holes. You can use something else like this, but for visual, then I'm gonna be using a glass one. This one is not exactly broken down. This will be really great also for terrariums. There is no drainage holes in terrariums because they're just basically an enclosed feature, an enclosed glass or something like that. So this size or something like this would be fantastic for a terrarium. You can crack it up, you can break it up yourself and that's not a problem, it's just to make it fit to size. After you finish putting a bunch of charcoal on the base of your container or your glass jar, at least an inch worth, then we're gonna be covering it with whatever potting soil you're gonna be using. All right, there we go. Now, every time we water, we have to be very mindful, pay very close attention, and do not forget that you have charcoal at the bottom and there is no drainage holes. Now that we're done, remember, you have to be mindful. You cannot forget that there's no drainage holes on the bottom. You also cannot forget that you have charcoal in there. Obviously, the charcoal is not gonna have a problem at all. One, we know it's organic. Two, we know where it came from. And three, we already know it's water absorption capabilities. So we should be good to go. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got some great information out of it. Let me know down in the comments below, have you decided to make your own charcoal? Do you wanna make your own biochar? Are you gonna use it? Are you gonna use it for your houseplants or not? Just let me know. If you did enjoy this video, and don't forget to smash that like button, I really appreciate it. Also, then consider subscribing. I know YouTube has been making it a little hard to like hit the subscribe button nowadays. Also, don't forget to check me out on live streaming every other Sunday that I'm always there. Until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll check you out later. Peace and love.